Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hi everyone, Sarah Diligence here and welcome back. If you're a returning um, subscriber, welcome back. If you're joining me for the first time, welcome. Good evening and I pray all is well. So, oh, okay, so it's been a minute. <laughs> it's actually really been a minute. Um, but, 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 but I am I'm excited to be back. Um, it's been it's been a little while. Um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. So again. Oh, <laughs> hi, hi, Amira. Good evening. Good evening, sweets. I hope you're well. Hope you're good. Thanks for joining me. And um, again, I you know what to be honest, I'd really like to thank Amira for the for the encouragement um, for this particular um, stream that I'm doing today. Um, so thank you. I do like to give a shout out to those that continue to support and continue to encourage me in doing what I'm doing. Um, so yes, 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 yes. All right. Okay. So today, 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 um, I really wanted to talk about why a VBAC. Um, I have had um, lots of comments on um, my VBAC story um, that I put out <clears throat> last month. I've had lots and lots of comments on there. And you know what? It has been such a blessing to really see the amount of women that have either experienced similar things to me or are yet to experience what I've experienced or wanted to experience um, what I had experienced but didn't have the opportunity um, for, you know, whatever reasons may have arised in their life at the time. Um, but it's been, you know what, when I made that video, like I said, it's something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. And, um, you know, I just felt like during that 30 day challenge that I was doing was the right time to jump on and um, really speak about it. So, you know, it wasn't it wasn't something that I kind of like, you know, I didn't plan it or anything. But, you know, I just came and I really said, uh, just told my story because that's all it was. It was just me telling my story, sharing my story um, about my um, first feedback experience. And, you know, for me, I I'm so grateful that. Um, I did do it because the amount of comments I've had to come through. And if you're watching this and you're one of those wonderful women who have shared their comments on the video, because other people are reading your comments and feeling encouraged at the same time. You know, if you haven't seen the video, it's my feedback story. It should be there on my homepage. Click it, um, watch it. And if there's someone in your life that, you know, um, will be blessed by, you know, share it with them, you know, share it with them. At the end of the day, that's kind of what it is. We're sharing our stories and we're just really here to encourage each other along the way. Um, so I had I had quite a few um, requests asking me to speak about um, another experience, which was my second VBAC. I didn't really mention that in that story um, because I was focusing on my first, um, the story was focusing on my first VBAC. And, and obviously, if you have watched that video, um, you would see how intense that day was or that, that, that period of my life was. Those nine months, um, or shall I say, those 40 weeks, <laughs> you know, should I say those 40 weeks? Um, because from the beginning of the pregnancy, it was, mm, yeah, okay, you can have a VBAC, um, but we're not so sure, um, you know, and they were giving me all these kind of stories. Um, and but then, you know, when I got to 37 weeks, my consultant turned around and said, sorry, Sarah, but we're not allowing you to do this. And it completely broke my heart and I was devastated. And I, you know, um, like I mentioned in that video, I, I cried for hours that day and I was so broken. Um, but you know what? I thank God I had the right people around me. My husband was very supportive and I pressed on. Um, and, you know, 40 plus five weeks, I was able to give birth to my son. Um, and, you know, labor was not as... Um, terrible as they were making it making it out to be for me um you know the the consultants they weren't supportive on the day but after birth they all came to show their support <laughs> you know they all came to clap and, and and say wow you did it like amazing well done no tear no mishaps no gas and air no epidural you you actually really did that you know 
So it was even very encouraging for me when I did have the consultants come through to kind of say congratulations on the birth of your son and on, you know, being our first VBAC <laughs> in this hospital after three C-sections kind of thing. Um, so that was an encouragement. But one thing I forgot to mention in the video, um, one thing I forgot to mention in that video was what gave me even more, um, made me feel even more encouraged that day was when I had... I had midwives come in to my ward, you know, and they were like, they knocked and they said, are you the lady that's just had the, um, the VBAC after three C-sections? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, can we, can I come in? This is individual. I had like four, four different midwives come in to speak to me, to congratulate me, but to have a small conversation with me in the time that they could um, pop in. And, um, uh, you know, one of the midwives I'd never forget. And she said, you know what? If she knew that she could have had a VBAC after three C-sections, she would not have had the fourth one. OK, now I say that because there's a woman who's going to be watching this, women that are going to be watching this, that are on their fourth C-section or on their third C-section. And they've been told that they can't do it or they feel that they can't do it, you know, but she can. OK, but we'll get into that a little later. So, you know, I, and she said to me that if she knew that she could actually have a natural birth, then she would have never had that C-section. She said that last C-section was the worst thing ever. Her recovery time, her scar, um, she felt depressed at the end. And there was just so many different things that she was expressing to me. And I was sitting there going, oh, my gosh, you're a midwife. <laughs> Right. So it really kind of threw me off thinking to myself, wait, am I actually one of the first people that they have seen or have heard of in doing something like this? And again, probably, you know, if you're watching this, if you're in the medical um, industry, if you're a nurse, if you're a midwife, if you're a doula, you know, if you're, um, you know, somebody who's who's uh, in that in in that sector of um of labor and delivery you know and it is definitely a thing that you know that they put women off you know leave it in the comments but give us a, you know, feel free to share some of your experiences and give give some advice all at the same time you know um so yeah so and then i had another uh, an, another midwife come in and said oh she had two c sections and she wanted a v back and she was told that um if she has a v back that her uterus would rupture and and all of these things and she just didn't want to take the chance and didn't want to take the risk but she um ended up having a c-section that she just she didn't want to have the c-section um and then i had another one come and congratulate me and again similar stories all these midwives had had c-sections okay and i always just kind of thought you know if you're a midwife you're having a natural birth just because you know you're a midwife you know that's what, that's what midwives do this is this is this is you know they, they they just do this right um so yeah uh, so that was one of the things that I forgot to share in, in, in my previous story. So, um, you know, let's fast forward. So after I had my first feedback, um, I then, um, got pregnant again, um, for my, for my second, uh, son, which my fourth, my fourth child, not my fifth child. Um, <laughs> but, um, the story on that is, is, is for another day. And, um, I remember when I found out I was pregnant for um, Stephen, Stephen and Elijah, I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Ladies, you know how it is, right? You know how it is. When you've just gone through something that all, everybody was on the opposite side in the, in the hospitals and, and, and the support that you needed from the hospital, they were kind of like, no, you're not doing this, but obviously that got done. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I have to shop. At this hospital again and they just better know that I'm not having a c-section that's just not something I, and you know what it was so funny because on with that pregnancy things were a lot smoother things were a lot smoother um because you know at this point I'm I've technically I'm an experienced um VBAC uh mum and so they were not as aggressive with me they were not as forceful they were still kind of weary and they were still treading carefully um with me but I was literally I I really was treated like somebody who had never had a c-section before um so that was good that was good 
And it was very interesting because after I'd had that um, VBAC, it then became as if my C-section history had been <laughs> kind of like erased in a sense. When I went for my, when I went for my appointments, um, you know, they were just kind of like, okay, uh, you've had a C-section. Oh, but you've had a VBAC, you know, kind of thing. And it wasn't that long ago. So yeah, this should be, this should be fine. It should kind of run smoothly kind of thing. Um, so I didn't, I didn't have that. Um, um, I was able to remove that stigma of once a C-section, always a C-section. And I feel for me like that was one of the, that was one of my, my, my drives um, with, with my first C-section. That was one of my drives. I really wanted to remove that banner off me and take that off um, my, my records in a sense. And also, you know, just being able to um, know that that statement doesn't have to apply to me. OK, so if you're watching this, I want to tell you also that that statement does not have to apply to you. OK, even if you've recently had a C-section and you didn't want one, but then they kind of made you feel that, you know, you've had a C-section, darling, or you've had two C-sections. So, you know, a feedback's not really a good idea. Um, I really just want to encourage you today that. Don't allow that statement to be a banner in your pregnancy. Don't allow that statement to be something that is, um, you know, that that makes you feel as if a VBAC is far from um, your reach, you know. So, yeah, so I thought I'd um, I, I just mention that. OK, so. So today I also wanted to. I also wanted to just, you know, briefly um, speak about a few pros and a few cottons, okay? Because even though, you know, I've had conversations with women who, um, you know, were pregnant at the time, and I was just kind of like, you know, they, they've had a C, they've had a C section before, you know, and I'm, you know, really sort of gearing them up to, you know, to go for that V back, and then they just kind of like, well, Sarah, but is it? isn't the most important thing that the baby's the baby comes out fine and I come out fine. Isn't that not the most important thing through this whole process? And I said, obviously I, I'm kind of like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. But at the same time, do you not want to just try, you know, to have a natural birth? You, I mean, you've had like one C-section maybe, or even two C-sections, you know, do you not think that it would be a good idea to try it? you know what, it's not for everyone because, you know, to to have a VBAC after one C-section is one thing, but to have a VBAC after two, three, four, five C-sections, now that, 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 that's a big deal, okay, because obviously the, 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 the lining become, begins to get a lot more sensitive and weaker and all that kind of stuff that they say, but but, you know, I, I've, I've been saying to women over the period of time that you have to know your body. You have to know what you can, what your body can take, what your body can handle. You, you're the only person that really knows how you've been taking care of yourself. You're the only person that knows, you know, the vitamins you've been taking, the food you've been eating, the supplements and all that kind of stuff. How you've been taking care of your body. You're the only one who really knows the pain that you're feeling, you know, um, so for me, it's not really, you know, for me to say, oh, yeah, definitely have a V-back or for someone to say, oh, yeah, you should definitely have a V-back. It has to be your choice. And so deeply that it's your choice that you are strong in that, in, in standing with that decision. Because, you know, like I mentioned in, in, in my first story, that they will come and and shake you. They will say whatever they can to deter you from having that 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 V bag. You know, they will book you in. They will, um, you know, stop midwives from um, speaking to you about the V bag and just make you focus on you know you're going to have a C section and they begin to you know make you feel as if you're fighting for something that that you're not entitled to. <laughs> You know, they make you feel like you're fighting for something that you're not entitled to. And 
for me, I just really feel like that in itself is wrong because, you know, if I'm in agreement for a VBAC and if my husband's in agreement for a VBAC, then that's what they should be supporting, you know, me, you to have, you know, if, if you're on your, if you're on your fourth C-section, you want to try for a natural birth and you truly believe that you can do it, um, then go for it, you know, go for it because, I mean, I was I was I was doing some research and I um I saw this and it says um, while a successful VBAC is associated with fewer complications than an elective repeat C-section, mm -hmm, a failed trial of labour after a C-section is associated with more complications, including um, uterine. Uh, mm -hmm, sorry, uh, I think I said uterine rupture. Um, where is it? Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Uh huh. Including a uterine rupture is rare, happening in less than 1% of women who attempt a trial of labor after cesarean. Okay. Now, when I saw that, I mean, I, 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 I found this out years ago. Um, but I wanted to bring it up for, you know, for, for, for those of you watching today. So I'll just pop that back on um, just so that, you know, you can, you can read that up on the screen. And you know what, that information generally should make you feel, uh, make you have some kind of faith in the fact that um, if you are going to go for a VBAC after a C-section, that there's very little chance of this big scare that they put on us. OK, they put this massive blanket over and it's like they're waving this flag going, your uterus could rupture, your uterus could rupture, you know. And but yet still, it's very rare. It's very, very rare. OK, um, I thank God for the women that have come on and commented and, you know, reached out to me via Facebook and and and, and also on here as well. Um, and they've said, you know, that they've had successful VBACs. And there are many women every day having successful VBACs, but they make it out as if, you know, um, this is something this is something that's not happening. But like the first statement said, it says you're more you're more you're most you're most likely to have less complications if you have a VBAC than if you have a C-section. Okay, you're most likely to have less complications. OK, and I am a, a, I bear witness to that. OK, twice. Right. That you're less likely to have complications if you have a VBAC. OK, so when a consultant is sitting there, you know, they don't know you personally. They might be meeting you for the first time. They don't know you personally, but yet still they're. Um, I'm going to try and read in comments at the same time. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. You know, they don't know you personally, but they are, you know, saying things to you as if they've been with you your whole life, you know. But the funniest thing is they don't they fail to tell us that the chances of the uterine rupturing is very, very low, like literally one percent. And if you ask them, they say, oh, well, you know, everyone's different. But, you know, it, it could, it can happen. It might, but let me get there first, right? And it, ta it really does, it really does take strength. It takes faith. It takes resilience. It takes um, oh, boldness to really sit there and, and sort of confront a medical professional, okay? Someone who is, uh, um, you know, really skilled, really educated in that field. And here you are, you're just a pregnant, <laughs> a pregnant woman, right? And, and, and you don't really know much about pregnancy or you don't really know much about the, the medical side of things. So they, they, you know, they can, they can talk down to you um, at, at this particular point. Um, so, you know, for me, dealing with consultants, I kind of feel like that's like one of the main the main struggles that we do find ourselves um, having um, as as um, women who want to attempt a VBAC. You know, I, I feel like the main barrier is our consultant, the person that, um, who is, you know, dealing with us throughout the pregnancy. Um, if they feel as if that you can't do it or they don't want you to do it 
or they don't want to be a part of it because a lot of them I feel I, I do feel like a lot of them um also have a fear about the whole situation um again you know with my first experience the midwife who ended up being an old school friend said to me that no one <laughs> are you guys listening no midwife one in my case like they were they were in the um in the staff room discussing who was going to come and assist me on that day right and everybody was like i'm sorry i i, I just can't I, i'm not i'm not dealing with that but then the um the midwife who did assist me on that day she i mean you know she's a she, young vibrant bold lively they were like you know what we know the perfect person for this job <laughs> So they, you know, when, when she came in to start her shift, they were like, we've got the best, perfect job for you. And she was like, bring it on, you know. And I thank God for that. I thank God that she was there that day because imagine, you know, and we don't know, we don't know that they're having these conversations. We don't know that there are, that, that you know, that midwives are sometimes, you know, saying, oh, no, I I, I mean, that's that one's too much for me. You know, I, I if something was to go wrong, I don't know what I'd do, you know, kind of thing. So if you don't mind, I'll stay out of this one, you know. I mean, you can just you can just kind of imagine them having having this conversation, you know. But um, but yeah, but they do have these conversations. So for me, I feel like once you're able to get past that hurdle with your consultant and get past the hurdle with them, the 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 team um that is um the, the prenatal team that are dealing with uh you know with you and other women and stuff like that once you're able to get past that then it kind of makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. so for me on the second on the second v back um like i said you know they were very much like well you know you've done this before you've experienced you've kind of shown because i went back to the uh, i went back to the same hospital You've shown us that this is possible. Um, so, you know, and, and and again, you know, I was really grateful because obviously that hospital had never experienced someone like myself coming to say that they're willing, that they want to attempt um, a VBAC after three. Um, so, you know, for them having that experience was like, well, you know, we've experienced this before now. So, uh, you know, <laughs> we're willing to give this another try. So they really did. Oh, 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 sorry. My camera's gone. I don't know what's happened there. Can I still be heard? Oh. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, guys, I don't know what happened there. Um, right, yeah, so if you can hear me, um, I'll appreciate in the comments if you can say you can still hear me. And if you can see me, just let me know. Uh, I'll appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, um, so... So for me, it was um, it was one of those things where I was kind of I was a lot more confident. Um, I was a lot more um, I felt a lot more experienced. Uh, I also felt like I knew what needed to be done if um, anything was to kind of go wrong. Um, I was prepared mentally. I was prepared physically. Uh, my husband was prepared. Um, and it was one of those things where. I was like, okay, yes, I've done this before, but every pregnancy is different, right? So, with this, with my with, with my second with my second VBAC, I really, really prepped myself mentally and ensured that that um, labor experience was going to be completely different to the first one. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. Um, okay, yes, I will. I'll answer some, a few questions in a minute. Um, yes, you can hear me and you can see me. Wonderful. Right. So, you know, my first my first VBAC experience, it wasn't great. OK, ladies, it really wasn't great. As in, when I say it wasn't great, emotionally, it wasn't great. OK, the labor itself went absolutely perfect. I couldn't complain. Right. Um, but the emotional side of it was actually quite trying. It was very it was very trying, and very testing and very emotional. Um, and quite heavy at the same time, because I was like, well, I'm, I just want to have my baby naturally. What's so wrong with that? You know, what's so wrong with me wanting to have my baby without being cut open? Yeah, OK, you know, I've been cut open a few times, but I don't want to be cut open this time. So what's so wrong with that? You know, but then having them, you know, really kind of like pressuring and and and, and pulling on and, um, 
making me feel like, no, this is, you know, you, you, you just can't because you're going to put you and the baby in danger. But anyway, right. So with, with, with Stephen, I, um, I created an atmosphere on Labor Day. OK, I created an atmosphere on Labor Day and I really wanted that experience to be like one that I've never had before. Obviously, I've never had it before. <laughs> um, so I um, on the day I had my um, music there. Um, I had these two amazing midwives who I and you know what? I really, truly believe I really believe that the midwives that were there um, on my second VBAC, had probably heard my story and said, you know what, we're, we're going to do this because I had two very, very, very experienced midwives with me on that day. Okay. They'd been in their business for a long time. They delivered lots of babies. Okay. And I also had a trainee there with me and <laughs> the trainee was extremely excited because for her, this is, it was something quite rare. And she said it, she said, this is a rare occasion. She doesn't think she's ever going to experience this again. <laughs> so she, you know, asked, could she, they asked me, can the trainee be um, on, in my, in my labor, you know, on the day? And I said, yeah, that's absolutely fine. You know, because obviously the, the more experience that she gets, the better. Um, so I had three, three with me on the day, a trainee and two very experienced midwives. And I truly believe because I had it, I had it so together, they had to have it together, right? They didn't have a choice. They couldn't act all nervous and, oh my gosh, if something happens to this woman, what are we going to do? You know, they had it together. I had it together. So I created an atmosphere that was warm. It was welcoming. I had my worship music playing in the background. My husband was, you know, worshiping and he was praying at the same time. And um, I was praying and, and, you know, staying. Obviously, I mean, I'm in I'm in labor. Yeah. OK, but but I was praying. I was <laughs> um, and I was, you know, doing my best to stay in a good place. And that really helped. That really helped. Because what happened when I created that atmosphere, it was also affecting the midwives, right? It was also affecting the midwives. And that's why a lot of the times when, you know, women go into labor, it's so important to have the right atmosphere. Because if we're acting, uh, you know, um, um, uncontrollable, if we're screaming, if we're, you know, spazzing out, if, <laughs> if we're really you know, throwing our hands all over the place, they're also going to kind of be like, oh, can you just calm down, you know, relax, da, da, da. and it's going to be tense. It's going to be tense. Okay. So, I mean, if you are pregnant right now, if you're pregnant right now and you're watching this and you're, you want to enter that and you want to go into that VBAC experience, one thing I would say, okay, is ensuring that the atmosphere is set right OK, because they can't if you're creating an atmosphere that you desire, they can't come and change that for you. They can't come and change that. So you play the music you want. If you're a person that likes scents, you know, you like some candles. If you like fragrances, you you bring some oils in and, and, and you know, you create your atmosphere. And you don't have to be at home. You can do these things in the hospital. You can set that atmosphere. But then they will begin to see that, OK, this woman has it together. She's not going to start, you know, reacting in a way of, of serious panic. And, you know, it kind of it allows them to, I guess, do their job um properly so yeah all right so i've got a question here from um from amira mm -hmm. and she says i'll put it up i'll put it up so you guys can see it she says did did you do an x-ray at scar uh, i guess for your scar sections while you were pregnant did i have an x-ray for my scar section amira no i didn't have one um i didn't get, i didn't have an x-ray uh i guess when they would do when they do the scans um, you know, if there is anything, I guess, um, un unusual there that they could probably see through the scans if there's something unusual. But no, I didn't need to have an x-ray. Um, I pose a question back to you. Did you have to have an x-ray um, when you, you know, when you were pregnant and, you know, you were attempting for a VBAC? Did they check you out? All that kind of stuff. Because I guess as well, every country is different, I guess, maybe country to country things are done differently. I do know that VBACs are quite popular in the United States. 
Um, and, you know, it's something that a lot of women over there, they, after a few C-sections, they decide to have, to, to, to go on and have V-backs. Um, so over here, I guess if they did want to um, do an x-ray, they could have, but they didn't. Um, so, yeah. And E says, yes, I'm 34 weeks. Yes, I'm 34 weeks, um, E says. Um, congratulations, E. <laughs> and you know what? I'm glad you're watching this. And it, are you, question, are you attempting a VBAC? Will you be attempting a VBAC? Let us know. Let, uh, you know, let us know. And I really hope that, you know, if you are attempting a VBAC, that you stand firm and you stand strong and you get there. 34 weeks, you're almost there, girl. So, um, you know, hang in there. And uh, I mean, I, I, I keep saying to the women that are writing in, please let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear the VBAC testimonies, honestly. Um, it's because it's such an encouragement. It's such an encouragement because you know what? Pregnancy in general, Ladies, let's keep it real. Pregnancy in general is a scary thing. It's a scary thing. It's 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 something that, you know, we've heard of women dying after labor and, you know, during labor and things like that. You know, pregnancy puts the body through a, a, a massive transition, you know, and it's no and it's and it's no joke, you know. So, you know, I guess sometimes when they think, oh, um, oh, and 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 also. You know, also, it's one of those things where for yourself, for you as a woman, you know what you're going through. You know how you're feeling. You know how heavy that baby is. You know, you know that um, you know, you're you the one that knows that you're not getting sleep. You're getting sleepless nights. You're not sleeping properly. You might have, a, you know, that pelvic pain. Oh, that one. That's another level. Um, <laughs> you know, you're the only one that really knows what you're going through. And that's why I truly feel that, you know, the VBAC should be our choice. Okay, it should be our choice. Um, and another thing I wanted to discuss today um, with you is that can you refuse a repeat C-section? Okay, and it says a woman has the right to refuse surgical delivery without regard for the risk to the fetus, the baby. I don't know they put fetus. <laughs> she may refuse a cesarean section for the reasons that have no medical basis. OK, so when we've got consultants, right, forcing us, yeah, forcing us to have C-sections, to be honest, that's not right. That is not right at all. You know, we should be able to say, <laughs> good evening, Kat Johnson, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining in. You know, we should be able to say that, look, I don't want a C-section and I don't have to have one. And then they're supposed to say, well, at your own risk then, right? And we say, yeah there will be no risk, right? When they're, when, when they're speaking these words, you have to push back those words, okay? Because again, words are powerful. Words either bring in fear or they bring wisdom, insight, light, joy. So if you have, if you're going through, you know, especially when we're pregnant, the last thing we want is negativity, right? The last thing we want is people being negative and not being supportive. We're already going through a lot of emotional uh, changes as it is, you know, and then to have those who are in the medical industry not being supportive is a hard thing to swallow and it's a hard thing to bear, right? Um, Emira says, how many hours was labor? Okay, wonderful question. My first VBAC, okay, the labor was, I think about four hours and 40 something minutes, right, from active labor. So from when I got to, I think, four centimeters, I think he came about four hours or so, four hours or so later, right, um, from when I got to four centimeters. And um, Stephen's labor was three hours and 20 minutes, or something like that, right? And I think I had um, also, I think it was with Stephen because he was bigger. Stevie weighed like over eight pounds. I think I had like, um, what they call that tier, um, like a level one tier or something like that. I think there, there are levels. It was just like a little tier. Um, and then I had to have a, a stitch at the end. But then, you know, that was that was fine. That was it. And again, with Stephen, um, I was I didn't take an epidural. There was um, I think I had gas and air on that one, um, <laughs> but at the at the very end because I don't think the gas and air goes with me very much, so I didn't really um, use that. And um, 
is labor labor wasn't long labor wasn't long because you know i don't i don't know for um if you're watching this and you've had um you know you've had natural births or you've had v-backs um how long you know was your labor how long was your labor and how long generally um is a labor labor varies from woman to woman um i got I, I guess labor varies from woman to woman so you know stevie obviously it it the fact that I already had Isaiah naturally, I think maybe the second labor just didn't need to be as long. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> you know, um, so it was just about three, and I'll say three and a half hours um, for the second one and about four hours for the first one. So I don't know. Is that good? Is that good time? You let me know. <laughs> you can let me know if that's good timing. Um, so, yeah, you know, so and 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 I really I really just feel like we need to get to the place now where we're encouraging each other um, to, you know, push on to have to have a V-back as opposed to a C-section. OK, not just because you've had a C-section means you should quickly opt for another C-section. I really thought that, you could, you know, we should and can allow our bodies to try to get us there. You know, I mean, there are some women who just don't dilate. There's some women who um, end up having... Um, I guess like medicals during um you know time of, of labor so they can't they you know they don't get to finish um and it, you know every situation is different every situation is different but you know we would never we're, we're never really going to know unless we try right we're never really going to know unless we try and i just really feel like you know being an in, being an encouragement to you and saying to you look it doesn't matter how many, I mean, okay, all right. Me saying it doesn't matter how many C-sections you, you've had, okay, might be a bit of a push, right? But, um, okay, thank you. Um, but when you've, when you've done, I, I mean, I did some research and I found there was a lady who attempted to have a C-section, um, a V-back after every C-section. He, she ended up having eight C-sections, okay, but she attempted for a V-back every time, right? Eight C-sections. This is a long time ago because I think when I when I checked out her blog, her children are like really big now, you know. Um, and she so she ended up she ended up with nine C-sections because she got pregnant for the last time and she attempted a V-back on that ninth pregnancy, right? So if you're on V-back, if you're on C-section two. C-section three, <laughs> I'm still going, C-section four, there's nothing wrong with you trying if you know your body, if you know that you want to do it, if you know that you're capable. Um, you know, Amara was Amara was asking, um, did I have an x-ray on my C-section, but I will, um, on my scar, but I was scanned um, on my scar. But then, you know, if, if, if they can x-ray you and check and see that everything is okay and you can have some kind of reassurance. But you know what? One thing I'll say is don't go with the mindset of the uterus could rupture. The uterine can rupture, sorry. You know, don't go with that mindset. Let that be the last thing that is on your mind. Remember, 1%. And there are how many billions of women in this world? Okay. 1%, right? Right. So let that always be like the last thing. Don't even think of that when you're, you know, in that position and, and, and you're about to give birth. Don't let, let that be the last thing on your mind. What you need is positivity, is faith, is encouragement. And you have to give yourself these things because you're not always going to get it. Like I've said before, you have to be the one to continue to encourage yourself. Um, and, and as well, you have to be willing to confront the consultant at, at a level where they have to understand that, look, this is my body. This is my pregnancy. This is my baby. Are you going to assist me or not? And they're not even really there on the day. No, they're not there on the day because they don't do labors, obviously, but um, they, they're the ones that do the C-sections and stuff like that. But, you know, they're not, they're not there on the day. Right. So they're, you know, they're just they're just there to kind of, I guess, push you along. Um, and and even, you know, I was I was I was doing some reading and, um, it, you know, it was saying that actually consultants don't always encourage a woman to have a C-section because they know it's it's time consuming. The healing process is long. 
and all these kind of stuff. So there are a lot of a lot of consultants um, and medical practitioners that are there saying, you know what, try for a VBAC. And if you're blessed to have one of those, as soon as they know that you've had a C-section, they're like, ah, you know, just try for a VBAC. That's not a problem. Um, but, you know, I have heard of stories of women have, have gone to multiple um, hospitals or birth centres and have been rejected because they've had two C-sections. Like right? they've been rejected because the 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 um the labor what's it called again the the labor place <laughs> I've kind of gone blank um uh, don't don't want to deal with it right they don't want to deal with they don't want to deal with us okay but at the end of the day it's it's once you've found a place I guess that you know is willing because I I know obviously different countries operate differently um you know it's it's diff it, it, it works differently if you if you're in a private hospital um you know you might be able to say yeah I'm having this because I'm paying for this and this is what you're going to do for me and this is what I want I'm paying you you know but if you're um like here in the UK in the on the NHS <laughs> you know government funded um 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 care then you know you still have you still have the choice you still have the choice right like it said like it said here yeah like it said here you can refuse a c-section okay and the last thing that you know and the thing that bothers me shall I say is when we're kind of told sorry but you have to have one right like they booked me in at 37 weeks and said, oh, you know, you're 37 weeks now. It's not a problem. We're going to take the baby out. Well, um, oh, sorry, you're 37 weeks. We're going to take the baby out in, in, on the 39th week, right? And I didn't know that I could refuse that, right? On the day, I didn't know I could sit there and confront the consultant and say, actually, no, I don't have to have a C-section. You can't make me have a C-section. You can't force me. But that was that was what I was going through, Right? That's what I was going through. OK, um, I have a question here. It says, lovely. Um, Amara says, question, what is the signal um, of you of rupture at active labour? <sighs> Intense pain. Extreme pain, Amara. It, it's been described as um it's been described as a pain so sharp and so strong that yes you don't want to experience that right it begins um the pain well and i listen i have an ex i didn't experience that thank you my lord jesus i didn't experience that okay but they explained it to me <laughs> right this is how deep they go sometimes the consultant went on to explain to me the pain that one could feel if the if the uterine was to begin to rupture. Okay, inactive labor, right? It's a pain so strong you 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 feel that you know the consultant said you feel as if something is tearing apart. Okay, and it's heavy bleeding, heavy heavy bleeding. So yes, this is not, it's, yes, it's, it's, it's not a joke. Okay. It is not a joke. Right. But, but I look on the bright side and I say, well, it's still, it's still 1% or less. And I'm definitely not in that 1%. And you have to say to yourself that you're definitely not in that 1%. Right. So, you know, 2016, when I had, when, when, when I was given birth to Stephen, my body, you know, and, and that's the, good, the great thing about the body is once the body has experienced something before, it kind of knows what to do next time round, right? So, you know, it was as if my body knew what was going on. And as well, having control over yourself is, um, is, is key, okay, is key. And I think that is one of, one of, one of the most important things is, to have it, is having control over yourself, on that day, the day that you're giving birth, you know, you need to be in control of yourself. You need to be in control of your mind, of your, of your emotions, of your feelings, because the minute you allow fear to creep in, okay, you can completely throw yourself off. 
right? And that's not what you want to do. We don't want to throw ourselves off. We want to stay on track. We want to have our music playing in the background. We want to have our sense. We want to have our, um, you know, your husband, if you're, if you're married, your partner there with you. You want to have the right person standing by you, encouraging you. You want to also ensure that you've created an environment that the midwives can't reject. <laughs> okay. You know, to create an environment the midwives can't reject. I had, uh, um, you know, and it was, again, it was a beautiful experience. Um, my, my second labor, you know, um, it, it was a, it was a, an amazing atmosphere. And one of the midwives ran out and she was crying. Right. And she ran out crying and she came back and she said, you know, she completely apologizes. Um, uh, um, but um, that the song that we were playing just really got her emotion and reminded her of, you know, something that had happened in her past. And I'm in labor. <laughs> OK, I'm going through the motions. But at the same time, healing's taking place. And, you know, you know, we were all praying and it was just a, it was just a, a wonderful atmosphere, you know. But that didn't just happen. I had to create that. My husband and I had to create that, ladies. OK, so it doesn't just happen. You have to create the environment that you desire on that day because the environment is very important. It is very important. Who's in the room? What's been said in the room? What you're listening to in the room? What you're, how you're composing yourself, how you're breathing, how you're, you know, managing the contractions, you know, all of these things come into play. Okay. All of these things come into play, right? Um, and let me see if I've covered what I wanted to talk about. Uh, I mean, this is this is always a question. Should I have a VBAC or another C-section, right? I mean, that question is definitely left for, you know, you and as an individual to answer. However, a lot of women would say they just have a C-section because they know, you know, that they're, they're not ready for any complications. But like we've read earlier, there's more complications that can, that can come out of a C-section than a V-bag. Because generally, you know, after a woman's had a baby naturally, maybe she's in hospital for a few hours sometimes. Maybe she's in hospital for a day or two. And, you know, they just want to check the baby and then baby and mum and everybody's going to go home. Um, but after a C-section, you know, you're you're still in a lot of pain. The, 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 um, the epidural's worn off, so you're feeling everything. You can't really walk you know, um, to laugh or to sneeze is, 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 um, is a chore because it, it's, it's very intense pain that it creates, you know, um, then when you go home, you can't really, you know, carry the baby much. You can't, if you've got other children, you can't really assist them. Um, you know, you have to ensure that, you know, that your scar doesn't get infected and things like that. So there are so much more, um, um, things to consider when you do have a c-section than when you have a v-back okay when you have a vaginal birth you know the what you know most probably a lot of women you know some of the the the, the worst things that generally happens is they might have a big tear you know but once that's stitched up and the body begins to um, regenerate and it gets comes back to normal they're they, you know they're fine and everything's okay um and obviously there's 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 the there's, there's a lot of the pain that you have to feel if you don't take an epidural and that you know what that's one thing i would advise okay and i thank god i i i i'm i remembered this point if you're going to have a vaginal birth after a c-section do your best to not have an epidural okay as well they won't if they know what they're doing they won't allow you to have an epidural do you know why they won't allow you to have an epidural because you won't know if something happens inside of you and they won't know okay so that's the one thing you know a lot of the times um you know some women th that might want to be back an epidural is not an option that's out of the question okay because they need you to feel everything that is happening to you at the time that it's happening to you okay yes it might be um extremely painful whatever but that's 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 what we're that's what we're opting in for right we're opting in to feel those every twinge every pain every everything that comes forth so i've got another question okay um you know so an epidural is not an option ladies right you can have a bit of gas in air um you can you know have a bit of gas in it, <laughs> but definitely not an epidural. 
Okay, I've got another question from um, Aya Patel. It said, "Big things can happen um, at C. Big things can happen at C section. Um, she nearly died due to bowel obstruction that caught her bladder um, and at her second C section." Right, I'm gonna just put that up there. Aya Patel, you know what? A massive thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing that because that goes with the with the statement that I put that I put, posted up earlier about more complications can happen right when we have a C-section than when we have a V-back. So for me if you're going to put V-back and C-section on the scale, okay, I would always opt and encourage you to opt for that V-back, okay? Without fear without anxieties and all those kind of things, because you have to brush that off, okay? You can't want to have a VBAC, but be fearful and be anxious all at the same time and, and think you're going to have a successful VBAC. Um, you have to pick a side, literally. You've got to pick what team you're going to be on. Am I going to be on team bold and, and team faith? Or am I going to be on team anxiety, team stress, team uh, pressure or whatever? You know, you don't want to be on that side because even just, even if you're not even, even if you're just pregnant, you want to be able to, you know, walk, not walk in fear <laughs> during, during labor, right? You want to be able to be strong, be bold all at the same time. Um, so, you know, big things happen, right, right? So uh, Patel's informing us here, right, that um, that she nearly died due to bowel obstruction. They, they cut, I think. Yes, they cut, yeah, they cut my bowel at the second C-section, right? So, I mean, Patel, I, can, I, I pray that you are, you know, you're well and everything is blessed now. And, uh, you know, we, we thank God for your life um, and everything. And I, I hope you and baby, um, you know, were all good at the end of that. But this is the thing. If they cut too deep, I mean, and the, and the thing is, C-sections, the precision has to be on point, Okay. The precision has to be so on point. If they get it wrong, even when they're giving you an epidural, oh my. Even when I've had that, just women who are just normal, you know, not C-section mums or not V-backs, you know, just normal pregnancies up for epidurals. I'm like, huh, that even an epidural is a risky thing, right? It's a risky thing. If you've ever had an epidural, you know what I'm talking about right now. You have to be so still as they put that needle through your spine okay they put the needle through your spine and if you move or if the if the um anesthesis i think they're called the person given the injection <laughs> you know um oh sorry guys i hope i'm all right here yes sorry you know if the person given the injection if they even go and less than an inch a millimeter to the left a millimeter to the right or if you mistakenly go oh at the time that they're giving you an injection, an epidural can actually cause someone to be paralyzed, right? It can cause some, it can cause a woman to become paralyzed. And I, and, 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 you know, we take these risks, right? We do, we take these risks, regardless, labor risk, regardless, it doesn't matter what situation, what side of the fence you're sitting on, okay? It is a risky, it's a risky thing, right? So when they even, even before they've even cut you, you've already gone through stage one, which is, which is, which is getting that epidural. Okay. And then epidural is a very risky thing. If they just get it wrong, just a little bit to the left, to the right up, if they miss that, the, the, the actual part of the spine that they're supposed to put the thing in, paralyzation can take place. Right. So even that in itself is risky you know, um, and, and again, if they, if they cut too deep, you know, like, like, um, 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 I Patel has said, they can cut your bow. They can cut things. Right. So before you, you know, opt for an, opt for a C-section before you, you know, allow a consultant, a consultant to strong arm you into having a C-section, um, before you, you know, let your mom or your sisters or your siblings say, oh, sis, you know what, it's risky, it's this, it's that. 
consider those things and get them to understand those things as well. Because sometimes those that are closest to us can generally be the ones that put us off. <laughs> okay. They can generally be the ones that put us off and, you know, throw our dreams out of the window. Right. Because you do want that support. Okay. Now, um, one of my closest friends, when she was, um, she opted for a VBAC and I was there for her every step of the way. And I said to her, you know what, as much as you want to tell everybody that you're going to have a VBAC, let's keep it quiet. Okay. Let's keep it. Let's keep the circle very small. Right. Let's not let everybody know what it is that you're about to do. You know why? Because you're going to get the doubters. You're going to get those that are going to be negative. You're going to get those that are going to bring fear into your life on, at, at this particular, at this crucial point. Right. So, you want to keep your circle small of those who know what it is you're about to go through. But on Labor Day, you don't want to tell anyone but the person and the persons that are going to be with you on the day. Yeah. You don't want to you, you don't want to be announcing, sending texts and WhatsApps. Oh, I've gone into labor. Da, da, da. No, 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 no. You want to send that message. Baby's here. V back accomplished. Right. And the reason why I say that is because. The more people that know, the more doubt that might creep in or the more um, negative um, words that might come to you or, you know, they might just be like, oh, the doctors are right. You know, they know what they're doing. They're doing, they're looking out for you and all that kind of stuff. Right. So you want to be able to keep the, the information of your VBAC to, you know, a few people. Um, and it can be your closest you know, it could be your mum who's doubting you and she's your bestie, you know, mum could be your bestie, but mum's like, no, listen to the doctor, don't do it, you could risk your life and the baby's life, so it depends, it depends on you, it depends on those around you, and um, yeah, you know, it just, for me, for me, um, obviously, you know, for me at the time on my first one, um, uh, a good few people um, knew that I wasn't I just wasn't doing it because I said for the minute I got pregnant, I'm sorry, I'm not having a, a, another C-section. So when people would ask me, I'll just be like, no, I'm having a natural birth. And I just started to, you know, prophesy and confess that I was having a natural birth, you know. Um, and again, second second time round, I just knew that I was, you know, I was going to attempt, attempt it again. And, um, you know, I thank God that I was able to be successful with it. So um my beautiful beautiful uh ladies and all of you who are watching this right now thank you so so much for joining me um thank you for watching taking your time out to watch this thank you for commenting thank you for sharing your stories and your experience believe me i appreciate it and every other woman who watches this will appreciate it also um you know again I just encourage you, if you haven't, subscribe, like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, um, you know, and press the notification bell so that, you know, if I'm if I'm coming on again, <laughs> you know, um, you'll be able to um, be notified. And I just want to thank each and every one of you again for taking your time out to join me um, on this on this particular topic. And you know what? feel free to leave in the comment section if there's anything you want to know, if there's any questions that you may have. Um, if there are, um, you know, if there's anything you want to share, if you, if there's a particular topics, um, surrounding this that you might want me to talk about, please leave, feel free to inbox me and leave it in the comment section as well and take care and good night and God bless you all. Thank you for watching Sarah Diligence here at Purposeful Life. Good night.